This is part four of a video series showing you how to 3D model your own printable gingerbread man candy dish in Fusion 360. Previously, we created the sketch, extruded the container and lid, ran a test print, and gave our gingerbread man a face. And if you want to follow along with those videos, I've got links to those videos in the description. And in this video, we're going to finish adding details to the body to finish it up. So for the bow tie, I think what we're actually going to do is we're going to do the bow tie and these little gumdrop buttons on the uh, the same sketch. Uh, a lot of people like to do everything all on the same sketch, so they would have done their face elements, the buttons, and everything. But I, I sometimes like to split them up. That way I can kind of go in and edit them individually, um, and I don't have to think too far ahead when I'm kind of decorating on the fly, um, I guess. But let's go ahead and move this out of the way, and then we're going to create a sketch on this top plane. And then the very first thing I like to do is draw a center line. So without clicking, just drag this up and then left click. We're gonna drag this down just so we have a nice center line across for anything that we're wanting to mirror, which uh, I think we're just gonna be doing one mirror. But the bow tie, I'm gonna hit L for line on my keyboard. And then we're just gonna draw something like this, get it roughly centered, hit okay. And then I'm gonna hit D for dimension. And I'm gonna dimension this vertex Let's go um, about 20, and then I'm going to dimension this vertex from here about 20, and then we are going to mirror that line across the center line, and that will make our bow tie roughly. And then all we got to do is hit L for line and connect these spots, and we have got a bow tie. Uh, one thing, so I, I kind of mimicked it off of this bow tie, but I think I'm going to add like a little circle in the center as well. I think that'll look nice. So let's go back here and then we're going to hit C for circle. And we're just going to draw like a little, let's go eight millimeters. I think that'll look okay. Nah, let's just keep it, keep it standard, keep it basic. And then what we'll do is we'll draw the gumdrops. So for that, I think we're going to do three. So I'm going to go roughly center and I'm going to hit C for circle and I want to do two. So I'm going to do like a 10 millimeter circle and then I'm going to do another one. That way it'll kind of be stacked because I kind of like the way that this gumdrop looks where there's the white underneath and then the green. I think that looks nice and it's more realistic, I guess, if you want to be realistic about it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to while holding shift, grab these circles and then we're going to hit control C, control V and we're gonna move this up. Let's go up about 20, that looks okay. And then we'll do the same thing again. Control C, Control V, we'll go down 20. And that looks okay for that. And then uh, I'm gonna finish the sketch. We'll pull these up because I like to see how things look as I go. So let's see, one, last, one thing I wanna look at really quick though is I do wanna have like a little bit of a belt. So I think I'm actually going to, let's see, we're gonna to go to move. And then we're gonna select this and this, and we're gonna go up four, and then hit okay. And then we're gonna right click, repeat, move. And we're gonna bring this one down four. That way they're still evenly spaced. And then we're gonna move all of them up a little bit. Um, some people might see this as a mistake, but I see it as I like to kind of make adjustments and move things around as I go based off how they are kind of coming together. So hit okay. And the reason I wanted to move those up is because I want to have like a little squiggly for like a belt, I guess, section. So let's go ahead and finish the sketch and extrude these things up. So we're going to hit E for extrude. And if I want them to be level with these, which I do, and I kind of forgot how high I extruded those up. So we're just going to drag this up a hair and then we're going to click on this face that we want it to be even with. So that is even, and then we're also going to go ahead and select all of these faces. Then we're gonna hit join, and then hit okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our sketches menu and unhide that, and then we're gonna hit E for extrude again. We're going to hide this. Why didn't those, hold on. Those didn't join the lid like they were supposed to. So let's see, let's go back to here, double click, open. I meant to change this to join instead of new body. I, I thought I did, I don't know why. Okay, it's keeping them on new body, let's see why. It should be, 
in line with that face. Oh, let's see, what if we try a combine really quick? So we're gonna click this for our target body and then these for our tool bodies. And okay, so now they joined. For some reason, they didn't wanna join with the extrude command, which is kind of irritating, but we are going to hide this lid and then we're gonna hit E for extrude again and we want these gumdrops to come up. We're gonna go up to about here. We're gonna hit join, and they're not gonna go that far above. We'll go about to there. And we're gonna go ahead and open our appearance menu and add some color to the model, just because I like to see how it looks as we go along. Okay, so let's close our appearance menu, and then we're gonna add a fillet to round these off and make not make them, or make them not so sharp. So let's select this face and this face, and let's do, let's see how one millimeter, uh, non-manifold edge, that's probably, it doesn't like what's going on in the very center. Let's see what we can do about that. I think we may need to go back into that sketch and, and draw the center button like I, I'd done before, that might help us out. Um, Cause it's not like in this center vertice as far as like filleting in there. But if we add something like this, finish sketch, and then if we go to that first extrude and we include this and then real quick I'm gonna go into appearance change this to faces now let's see if it'll fill it for us all right it did and it did not do what I was hoping it would do and save us any time on having to paint these faces, which is okay. That is the beauty of editing, that I can just fast forward through it. Then we're gonna close this, and then we're gonna fill it these edges. These shouldn't have a problem, hopefully. One thing, my zoom in and is out, out is starting to get a little squirrely, so we're gonna hit fit, and then we're gonna go to fill it. We're gonna see if these, I'm gonna see what these edges will allow. Will these allow one millimeter? Yes. So we're gonna one millimeter all of these edges as well. Okay, so we've got those decorative pieces and the last thing that we want to do is go in and add some of these icing squiggle squaggles. We're gonna go ahead and create one final sketch for our squigglies and then we're gonna hit L as always and draw our center line that way we can mirror whatever we need to mirror and then we will go ahead and draw our squiggly. And I, I've actually, I've never drawn squiggly lines like this before. So let's just kind of see how it goes. Uh, we're gonna use a fit point spline and I'm just gonna kind of start kind of freehand tracing out a little bit of a squiggly. We're gonna see how it looks. go from there okay now let's go ahead and mirror that and just see how it looks mirrored across the center line so that looks okay I think that can work and then let's try control C control V move this down ah, it might work if we make some adjustments I kind of want to just manually trace it actually so because I think it'll look better so let's draw fit point spline and let's just kind of manually trace it the good thing is is that it's icing so like it doesn't have to look perfect but what I'm doing is I'm trying to kind of keep my my vertices somewhat matching the vertices on the top line so it all kind of stays a little bit more uniform and cohesive. And that I think looks okay. Let's go ahead and mirror that one over as well. Mirror over the center line. And yeah, I think that's gonna be okay. Let me hide the dimensions and constraints. I think that will work for our squiggly. So now all we need to do is draw one down here and one down here, mirror them over, and we are good to go. So we're gonna use a fit point spline on this, just like with the other, and I'm gonna go ahead and just draw myself like a little bit of a guideline so I can kinda 
keep track of the direction that I want it to be going because it's a little bit of a weird angle. And now I'm gonna draw a fit point spline and we're just gonna kinda get our, our squiggles going and hope for the best. And I think there's probably a better way to do this, but I like the organic look that it gives as if it's actually real icing. Okay, not too bad. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it all. Nope, I don't want that. Let me get rid of this line. And then we're gonna move this all about there. And then we're just gonna make a little bit of tweaks. Same as with the mouth, I'm just gonna drag and drop a few of these vertices around just to lightly reshape. All right, I think that will do for the arm. So let's go ahead and mirror that over. Mirror across the center line. And then we got one more squiggly to do on the leg and then we will be good. So let's go ahead and draw our guideline once again. I think we'll do it right around here and grab our fit point spline and just like with the belt and the wrists we're just going to kind of eyeball it and try to make it look nice and organic well, let's go ahead and mirror this over and we'll just extrude them and see how everything looks so we're going to hit ok and we're going to hit finish sketch and we're going to hit e for extrude and we're going to select all of these profiles we're going to bring them up even <clears throat> Let's see, we're gonna drag this up just a hair and then we're gonna click to be level with this surface, which is level with the top of this white surface and the level with these eyes and everything else. And it's already selected to join, so we're gonna hit okay and we are good on that. And then let's see if we can add a little fillet to these so they're not so sharp. Let's see if it causes any issues. Let's try 0.5 millimeters. 0.5 I think we'll do. Um, so let's, while holding control, select the rest of our faces that we want to fill it. And it really does work out that they were like, you know, drawn pretty imperfectly, I think. Um, so I'll go ahead and hit A for appearance and let's go ahead and make our icing white. All right, we've got everything colored. Let's go ahead and let's see how it looks. Shaded. All right, I think that looks, I think that looks okay. Let's go ahead and give it a print and see how it looks. And real quick, I wanted to take a moment to thank all of my wonderful Patreon supporters. It's because of all your wonderful support that I am able to create these models and make these tutorials. And now we have our very own 3D printed gingerbread man candy dish. That is a big mouthful, but I really hope that you enjoyed the process and I hope that you were able to make this thing your own. And that is the end of part four. I originally intended on making this only four parts, but I've already filmed a part five showing the changes and improvements that I've made to the design after seeing it printed. So thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and we will see you on the next one.